Welcome to another lively edition of the Deadly Experiment All. You know, folks, um, we've been dealing on several of these programs that you can see on YouTube, by the way, under the name Rick Adams Uncensored, The Deadly Experiment. We've been talking a lot about the confusion, if you will, the babble on. Babble means confusion in churches today in uh, what is supposed to be God's house. Most churches, Protestant, Catholic, non-denominational, denominational, it doesn't matter what they are today. Most churches in my area here in Rhode Island and elsewhere, as far as I'm concerned, are not teaching the Word of God. Now, I know some will take offense at that. Some will say, what do you mean? I've had people come up to me and as a result of this program, not my pastor. He knows the Hebrew. He knows the Greek. He knows the Septuagint. He knows the Masara. He's got them all on the shelf. And then I ask him one simple question. And you know what it is? Do you know who the Kenites are? And then invariably he scratches his wooden head or she does the same and says, what do you mean? I said, you mean to say you don't know who the Kenites are? Your pastor doesn't teach that from the pulpit? I'm sorry to say, but it was nice knowing you. Take care. Bless you, and better luck in the millennium. Now, why do I say that? I say that because that's the most important question of the times in which we live, the time of the evil fig tree planted in Jerusalem in the year 1948 A.D. Who are those who say they are of true Israel, are not, though, and do lie, and are of the synagogue of Satan? So the Kenites, the word Kenite, Cain, that's where it derives from. Cain, now let me think for a minute. Who was this fellow Cain? He was a good guy or a bad guy? No, he was a bad guy. Cain was born, not from Adam, because Adam was not his father. But he was born in his mother's womb, and then, of course, followed Abel in continuation of that pregnancy, continuing in labor, as it says in Genesis chapter 3. And you can read it for yourself. Get yourself a good King James Bible, but also get a concordance or a Green's, J. Green's interlinear Bible, a Smith's Bible dictionary. So you will know that the word yasha in the Hebrew means to continue in labor. Two twins. One Cain, one Abel. One Abel born of the father, his father, and the other born of his father, which is Satan. Now you understand the word Cain obviously results in or progresses to the word Kenite, which is used repeatedly in the Masoretic scripts. It is used in the Septuagint, which is the Greek and it is used in the King James Version with a companion or a concordance Bible. So you have the meaning of the word. So Cain had children on the earth, a seed line, as we show on the screen quite often, and Abraham and Adam and Jacob also had a seed line, beginning with Adam. Adam, Adam, simply means to show blood in the face, ruddy complexion. From that seed line came the seed line that would beget Abraham and Isaac and, yes, Jacob, all of them continuing down to this very moment today. Because there are two seed lines, one of Satan, one of God. Now we have Dr. Compare with us once again on this special program, a legal scholar, a Bible scholar to be sure. Let's understand the following lesson, and we'll come right back to continue to comment on his wonderful teaching right from the Word of God. You, I dare say you will not hear your preacher, your pastor, your priest, your minister uh, talking about it. You might find it in some unlikely of places, but you will not find it in most 501 IRS C3 chartered churches. They wouldn't dare. They wouldn't dare tell the truth, because if they started preaching the truth, they would have their 501 tax-exempt status lifted. 
And that would be the end of it. And that would be good. That would be a good thing that they lose it because they shouldn't have it to begin with. We don't exist as a, quote, church, thanks to the hand of government and the uh, IRS, which is known as the Israeli Revenue Service. No, we don't exist at their behest. We come together in the name of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. We come together studying his word in fellowship one with another, not necessarily in a church building with stained glass windows or any other such regalia. But we come together of like mind, walking as two agreed to study the scriptures to show thyself approved. A workman who needeth not be ashamed. So it's very important. If you're a pastor and you cannot answer that question, who are the Kenites? Then you're in a heap of hurt. Another question is, do you believe in a rapture theory? That suddenly, all of a sudden, before things really get bad, before the Great Tribulation, which it does not even say, the Great Tribulation, anywhere in Scripture, speaks of tribulation and great tribulation for the saints, those that are called out, before this earth and heaven age, to witness before whom? Before Satan, when he comes where? To the earth, not up in the sky. Believe in the rapture, good luck in the millennium. And most importantly, Adam and Eve were not the parents of all who live on the earth today, far from it. And now let's get to Dr. Compare and his scholarly work. Many people have become agnostics because of the supposed conflict between the Bible and science. In truth, there is no conflict at all between a correct translation of the Bible and really proven science, not just unproved theories. One of these supposed conflicts is between the fact that science knows that human beings have lived on the earth far longer than the few thousand years covered by the Bible, and the common belief that the Bible says that Adam was the first man. But the truth is that the Bible nowhere says that Adam was the first man. Yes, I know that most of the preachers say that, but the Bible does not say it. It merely says that Adam was the first man of a new white race. The many mistranslations in the King James Version obscure much of the truth. For example, Genesis 1, verses 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, as though God made it all a complete mess. In the Hebrew, however, it says, now the earth had become chaotic and empty. For example, see Rotherham's emphasized Bible. That is, some early catastrophe had wrecked the earth, which was not without form and void before that. This was a judgment of God on earlier civilizations for their wickedness. Jeremiah 4, verses 23 to 27 gives us a vision of it. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. For thus hath the Lord said, The whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. Therefore we do find buried ruins of cities older than Adam, and skeletons which can be dated by the carbon-14 process as many thousands of years older. But the Bible tells us about this. Next, the Bible tells the creation of men in the plural, in Genesis 1, verses 26 to 28, saying, Male and female created he them. And God told these people, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth. Plenish is an obsolete English word meaning to fill, and you cannot replenish what was never plenished or filled before. But in the next chapter, Genesis 2, we find the Adam in the singular created. The Hebrew word Adam, rendered Adam in the English, is from a root word meaning to be of a ruddy complexion, showing blood in the face. A word obviously not applicable to the dark races, which we also know from scientific evidence to be much older than the white race. And when the Bible is speaking of the particular man, Adam, who was created in Genesis chapter 2, it always says the Adam. 
Bible scholars know that Genesis 3, verse 20, and Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living, is a forgery, a later interpolation which was not in the earlier manuscripts. For example, see Moffat's translation. In Genesis 3, verse 3, when Eve tells Satan that God has said that they must not touch the fruit of the tree of good and evil, the word there translated touch is the Hebrew word naga, meaning to lie with, to have sexual intercourse with, which plainly shows that these were people and that there were other people in the world at that time. The fourth chapter of Genesis records the birth of Cain and Abel. In the Hebrew, the wording suggests that they were twins. No other child of Eve is mentioned until the birth of Seth, when Adam was 130 years old, certainly long after the birth of Cain and Abel, which most scholars say was over a century earlier. Yet, when Cain killed Abel, and in punishment was driven out of the land, he complained to God that anyone that findeth me shall slay me. That's Genesis 4, verse 14. Also, Genesis 4, verse 17 records that upon being sent away, Cain found in the land to which he went many other people, because he not only married a wife, but found enough people there to build a city. These were the pre-Adamite races mentioned in the latter part of Genesis chapter 1. The Garden of Eden was not a plantation of ordinary trees and shrubs. God did nothing so foolish as to make a special creation just to have a man to wield shovel and pruning shears when he already had millions of pre-Adamite peoples available for that sort of work. We are told that the Garden of Eden contained the tree of the knowledge or experience of good and evil. Now, no tree of the forest has any knowledge or experience of either good or evil. And the 31st chapter of Ezekiel says, Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon, with fair branches and a shadowing bough and of a high stature. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his boughs were multiplied, and his branches became long. All the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Obviously, the trees in the Garden of God in Eden were family trees of races and nations who admired and envied the early Assyrian Empire, for an ordinary wooden tree can't envy anybody. These races and nations made up the garden that Adam was to cultivate. That is, Satan had been what we might call the superintendent or governor of this planet, to rule it in obedience to God's will, until he forfeited that position by rebellion against God. Adam was sent to take his place. It was Adam's job to rule the various nations and races of the earth as God's representative here, educating them in God's laws and enforcing obedience to those laws. These other races and nations had been here many thousands of years before Adam. Therefore, the Bible makes it unmistakably clear that we are not all descended from Adam and Eve, for there were other races on earth, already old, already numerous, when Adam was created. And among these other races, there are several who are simply pre-Adamic, and one at least which is satanic. If you will read the third chapter of Genesis, you will notice that immediately after the fall of Adam, when God required them to answer what they had done, God condemned Satan. The word mistranslated serpent here is the Hebrew word nokash, which literally means enchanter or magician. And no doubt Satan, still possessing many of his angelic powers, was able to be an enchanter or magician. It is certain that the one who seduced Eve was no mere scaly snake wriggling along the ground. Yes, I said seduced Eve, for that is what she admitted in the original Hebrew, and Cain was the son of that seduction. The Bible uses the word begat with monotonous regularity in tracing family trees, but the first time the Bible ever says that Adam begat anyone is Genesis 5, verse 3, where it says, And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. But to get back to Genesis 3, verse 15, 
God said to Satan, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. The same Hebrew word for seed is used in both cases. Satan was to have just as literal seed or descendants as Eve. God's own word being pledged to this, we must expect to find it actually happening. And we do. Jesus Christ himself tells us of it. In Matthew 13, verses 38 and 39, in explaining the parable of the tares among the wheat, Jesus says, The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. Again in John 6, verses 70 and 71, Jesus had been talking with his twelve disciples, and we read, Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. And again, you should read very carefully the eighth chapter of the Gospel of John, where Jesus told those who hated him, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was not being vulgarly abusive in either of these cases, for he never resorted to name-calling for abuse. He did call some of them hypocrites, which they truly were, so his statement was precisely accurate. He did call some of them serpents, children of vipers, which again was accurate. Long before this, the children of Satan had adopted the serpent as a symbol or emblem of Satan, and that is why their tradition eventually gave the word nakash the secondary meaning of serpent, when its original true meaning is enchanter. Jesus, therefore, was telling them that they were of their father, the devil, or serpent, if they preferred that word. In this, he was simply stating a biological fact with scientific precision and identifying the persons of this ancestry. Whenever someone tells you that the Bible is in conflict with what modern science has proved true, don't you believe it. The things that many preachers teach are in conflict with scientific truth, as we all know. But these preachers are equally in conflict with the Bible. Go back to the Bible, not to any man-made doctrines, and double-check it for accuracy of translation. You will find that what the Bible really says in its original languages is accurate with a precision that our scientists have not yet achieved. Well, I think you, uh, if you're open-minded to the truth, now you understand, folks, the Bible does make sense. All of these Bible preachers that say the earth is a few thousand years old and it's new and it was just created, the Bible doesn't teach any of that. The Bible doesn't teach, for instance, that Adam and Eve begat all of the seed lines of those on the earth today, including the Negro races, the other races, the Asiatic races. It doesn't teach that at all. Nor does it teach that seed line of Cain came from Adam. Quite the contrary, as you can see. It's about time that especially our younger people who know many of them, you know, relatively are just gullible and naive, but also they have a sense of innocence. And we hear from them on these programs, especially when they go on the YouTube channels. Um, occasionally I bump into them and uh, they say, you know, what you're saying makes a lot of sense. I was agnostic. I believed, but I did not understand or have any belief in God as deity. And you know what? You're convincing me now that we've been misled, most of all, by churches, organized religion. And I've said, you're right. Organized religion, churchianity instead of Christianity, is not where the action is. Folks, come out of the churches come into the Word of God. The Word of God has the answers if you understand the Word, if you can read and write. And today, with the government school system, it's getting more and more indiscernible, or shall I say questionable, as to whether people can read or write. Uh, and that's purposefully. The common core education of the uh, kids today, the dumbing down of the, uh, the, the school systems, the Federal Department of Education, which Ronald Reagan came into office promising he would abolish it. And Claudine Schneider and a whole bunch of others went into office too and said, we are going to have a balanced budget under this administration. Well, not only was it not balanced, it was more imbalanced than ever before. 
it grew and grew and grew like Pinocchio's nose. We had the Department of Education grow. We had the Department of Energy grow, all from the Carter administrations prior to it. Folks, we're beginning to see now you can't trust a thing, anything a politician says. They're all, they're all liars to some degree or a large degree in the case of many that we know here in Rhode Island. But that's not the only thing. Most of all, you cannot believe the media. And I mean the national media, international propaganda mills, as we have seen, you know, fake news is something that Trump has popularized. But fake news existed way before Mr. Trump was born. In the Rothschild banking conglomeration in America, here in this country where newspapers were being bought up literally by the dozens and the hundreds, J.P. Morgan is another classic example, as we've shown on many of our other programs. You begin to add two and two and you get four. And you understand that you've been lied to all your life. Well, if you've been lied to in Genesis, the book of Genesis, which is the first ordered book, the first ordered book in our scriptures, you're not going to understand anything else, are you? See, science, as I tell some of these young people, science is not totally wrong. True science is in accordance with the Word of God. Because Adam and Eve did not procreate all of the races on the earth today. As we saw that Cain, when he was cast out of the garden, went east. And he went into the land of Nod, just like Manchuria in Asia. And there he took a what? A wife. So folks, again, think about it. Think logically for a minute. Biblically is logically. No, the Bible is not a book of fantasy. As I say, science, true science, can verify what God's Word does say. God's Word is very definitive. In Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In verse 2, we know that, and the earth did not create itself. God did not create it void. Mistranslation. Back up. And the earth became void and without form, and darkness fell upon the earth. What does that mean? That's the first earth and heaven age where the dinosaurs roamed the earth. I know some Christians don't want to hear that. Oh, no, no, no. This is the only earth age, and we're going to go into the millennium and then into the kingdom of God. But that doesn't make sense. Read Second Peter chapter 3, verses 1 onward, where he refers to the age that was before this age. You say, read Job. Right in Genesis, in most of the scripture, it is not talked about very much. We know very little about that age, but there was an earth age, a heaven age, way before this one. How much? We don't know. You see, that's why we cannot put a date or an age on the earth. That makes sense biblically. In the beginning, when was the beginning? We don't know. We do know that God created the earth out of nothing, as he does everything from nothing into something. He can take you and create you into nothing, as he will on Judgment Day for those who are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, cast into the lake of fire, never to be heard from again, no more annoyances, no more troublemakers, no more appeals courts, none of that will exist. That day is coming, believe me. So, as Dr. Compare has shown, you see, the Bible is a book of true science. Don't let anybody try to tell you that it's not. And at the same time, don't let anybody try to tell you these foolish, silly theories of so-called science, pseudoscience, like evolutionism, are logical, are rational, and are backed up by fact. They are not. The theory of evolution is a theory that is totally unfounded, logically, scientifically, and in any biblical sense. No, God did not allow for the earth to be created, theistic evolutionism. God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth became void. Darkness fell upon the earth. That was the kathapo in the Greek, Satan's rebellion against God. And Satan would take one-third of the angels with him. 
So rather than God destroying that earth and heaven age, he says, I am going to create a new heaven and a new earth, new heaven age, new eon of time in which I will replenish the earth. You see, that word replenish obviously indicates that there was something there before. Otherwise, you wouldn't replenish. You wouldn't do it again. That's when the flesh age began. No dinosaurs, none of that. However, people were created, how? Out of their mother's womb. A male and a female. That's Adam, and that's Eve, and that's Keturah, okay? And that's Hagar, the father of all of these different races, from the Middle East to Asia to Africa. All of them created by their own biological parents. Otherwise, it would be impossible to get a black person from a white, Adamic, Caucasian, Israelite soul. Eve is known as the mother of all who would live, not all who live, but all who would live through her seed line in which Jesus Christ would be born. See, now the Bible makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? But your preachers aren't going to tell you that in most churches. They are morally, intellectually, and uh, scripturally bankrupt. A lot of it's not their own fault. They go to theological cemetery, uh, seminaries and wind up getting dead in the head. Deadheads. And this is why so many younger people, even many older people, don't want to hear about the, the Bible. And the media bosses make sure that that Bible is derided and uh, disparaged and totally debunked in their eyes by science. The science that says evolution created everything, which of course also is totally impossible. Oh, there is evolution, which simply means change. Change from one form of life to another form of life. The butterfly, for instance, you see? This is just one of the examples of how God created the seed line, he created the animals, he created the flesh, he created the insect world, and he created the fowls of the air. Yes, they do evolve and change, but they did not appear out of nowhere. They did not come from a big bang, from absolutely nothing to something, and then diversify in billions and trillions of ways so that you have eyes, two of them, if you're lucky enough to be born that way, and you're not addicted to depleted, uh, depleted uranium poisoning from these evil wars in the Middle East. But then you'll understand that those eyes have so many functions, it could possibly not no way could they have been born through an evolutionary process. It's impossible. Friends, time is up. We're just about out of time. Study to show thyself approved and learn the real meaning of the Word of God. Get your Bible concordance. Dr. James Strong is a good one. There is the Moffat translation, which also is another good one. Uh, uh, Dave Green, I believe it's Dave uh, Green's interlinearary Bible and the Smith Bible dictionary for starters. Then you can understand that the Word of God is applicable to this generation, the evil fig tree generation in Jerusalem. Thank you for watching. Rick Adams, your host and producer, saying goodbye and may Yahweh bless his elect.